Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, now it is recording. Thank you, every, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for our webinar um, for where we will be discussing VAWA and UVISA as options for special immigrant groups. Now, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Remember, we are a law firm named Elise Law Firm. We are based out of Miami, Florida. Um, please reach out to us for any of your immigration needs. Our phone number is 305-371-8846. You may also write to us at intro at, at eliselawfirm.com or head on over to our website, eliselawfirm.com and just fill out a submission form and we will get right back to you. We speak Spanish, English, French, and Haitian Creole. So don't hesitate because of a language barrier. Remember that we are able to help you with your immigration case, no matter where in the world you may be. And let's get started. Attorney, thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to introduce everyone to attorney Patricia Elise. Um, she is the uh, attorney for our firm. And we're, we're very excited to hear, the, uh, to hear her talk on the topic that we have at hand today. So I will share my screen with everyone so that you can see um, what's going on there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Catalina. So let's jump right into it. As you guys know, we do host monthly webinars. Um, we've done webinars on fiance visas. We've done webinars on um, business visas. We've done webinars on humanitarian programs, especially the humanitarian and parole program. And this month for March of um, 2024, we're focused on empowering immigrant survivors of abuse. We're specifically going to be targeting the VAWA and the U visa options that are available to immigrants that can show that they have been a victim one way or another. Next slide, please. Okay, great. So, what are VAWA and U visas? Um, VAWA and U visas are the most common immigration programs for immigrants who have been victims of crimes, whether they are physically within or outside of the United States, right? So VAWA, which stands for Victims Against Women's Act, is really a program that Congress came up with to help immigrants that are victimized by their family members who are U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. While U visas are for immigrants who have been a victim of a qualifying crime, which is out, so the, the person that's victimizing them doesn't necessarily have to be um, their relative. So here's just a quick little summary of both um, it's really important to note that one immigrant may actually qualify for both programs. So because if you are a victim of domestic violence, you will qualify for both a VAWA application as well as a U visa. But like I said before, both are different, both have different purposes, and they both also have different time frames. Overall, the VAWA program will run a little quicker than the U visa program that is available. So VAWA again is for a person that may be considered under the VAWA if they're a victim of battery or extreme cruelty. Um, and this is gonna benefit again, an immigrant who's been victimized by a family member. So this is gonna be mostly if you are married to a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident, if you're a child of a US citizen, or lawful permanent resident, or if you're a parent of a US citizen. So it really encompasses a large group of family members there. And as you guys may be aware, unfortunately, some people will use their immigration status to take advantage of others. I'm sure you can imagine a situation where if you're married to a U.S. citizen, that U.S. citizen petitions for you to come to the United States, you may not know anyone else, um, and they may take advantage of that to 
victimize you in the relationship. While a U visa, a U visa is the application, the program that Congress has put in place to set aside a number of visas each year for victims who have suffered either physically or mentally, and they're able to show that they've been helping government officials in the investigation or the prosecution of the criminal activity. So we'll also, so this program was really meant to help, right? To help the different um, police um, units, the different courts to really help prosecute people in the community. So this is to empower victims and allow them to come forward and for them to know that they're gonna be protected even though they do not have an immigration status within the US. Attorney, before we move forward um, to the next portion of your presentation, I think it's important. I think this portion of, the, of what you're saying is super important because essentially, and you may correct me at any point, you're, what you're saying is not everybody can apply to this program, correct? This is very case specific. Correct. So um, if you have been a victim, we definitely want to sit down and see, okay, which program you're going to benefit from, or if you're going to qualify from. If you are, for example, if you're not legally married to your abuser, you may qualify for a U visa application because, and we'll go into that a little further in the presentation, domestic violence is one of the qualifying crimes where you can actually get a U visa and the U visa will later on give you the opportunity to apply for a green card. The VAWA application, on the other hand, if you were abused by a family member, so if you're abused by your spouse, if you're abused by your parent, you would be able to qualify for a VAWA. So each application, each case is gonna be different and we wanna make sure that you apply for the correct program. So yes, that is very much so correct. Each case is gonna be different, very case specific. Thank you, attorney. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and dive in a little bit more on the vowel program. So the first thing I really wanted to highlight is even though the program is called VAWA, and even though it's named Victims Against Women's Act, it does not only protect women immigrants. Um, it's simply the name of the program. So we've so VAWA also protects men, right? Um, so some men feel like they may not qualify or they may not be as comfortable coming forward as a victim of their marriage or they've been victimized by a family member. But we've definitely had had the opportunity to help a lot of men, especially men from the Caribbean who have come to the United States because their U.S. citizen spouse petitioned for them and they end up being victimized. Now, believe it or not, believe it or not, it's very common that they have evidence of being physically victimized by their wives or by their spouses when it comes to a same-sex relationship. Um, but it, they don't necessarily have to show a physical abuse because with the VAWA program, generally, you will qualify if you can show either battery or extreme cruelty. So some people may say, okay, well, what do you mean exactly by extreme cruelty? Battery is pretty self, you know, you, for battery you can um, understand it on your own. You have to show that you've been physically victimized by your family member. But extreme cruelty is to show that you've suffered in a way where it is an emotional abuse, but it's to an extreme extent. For example, something that immigration will take a look at is to see have um did were you isolated right once you came to the u.s were you isolated by the petitioner were you isolated by your family member um were you taken advantage of financially so were you not allowed to have a credit card or did they take over all of your savings they'll also take a look to see have there been any emotional abuse um have you proved emotional abuse right so that's a different question that comes up Emotional abuse can be shown a lot of different ways. Um, with the immigrant's own affidavit, 
affidavits of friends and family members that can explain the difference that they've seen in the immigrant or the access they've had to them. So if someone's, for example, sister or brother or mother um, writes a very detailed and sworn affidavit to immigration explaining, listen, before this person came to the US, we used to speak all the time. Once they came, I noticed that, you know, I spoke to them a little bit less and to the point where after a while, they were not allowed to speak to me anymore. That is one type, that is one way to prove that you were isolated. It's one way to prove the emotional abuse. Um, if you're also able to show, for example, that your abuser has threatened you, it's very common that the US citizen or lawful permanent resident will say, if you don't do what I tell you to do, I will call immigration. I will deport you. I will have you be sent back to your home country. If that is a threat that you're experiencing and you're able to document it either through text messages or having someone else hear it or even in your own testimony, that is one way of showing that you've been victimized and that you've experienced extreme cruelty. Um, you can also, for example, present letters from your therapist or you could present any reports from your doctors that can go into your mental state and how you've been impacted by the marriage or the relationship that you're in. So what's really interesting is I've had some immigrants ask me, well, you know, um, can I apply for VAWA because my spouse was not nice to me and they cheated on me, right? The answer is, well, it depends because there is definitely a fine line, right? Between showing you were victimized by the marriage, that you suffered extreme cruelty in the fact that it was a bad relationship. You will not qualify for VAWA if it was a bad relationship, but you will qualify if you're able to show on paper through documentation that you entered the marriage in good faith that you were taking advantage of, mm -hmm. that it was extreme, and that you suffered different ways, physically, emotionally, sexually, financially, um, that they isolated you from your friends and family, from you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's definitely one way to approach um, a VAWA case. Okay, so just to wrap up what okay, you were perfect. saying there, so every, every, Every relationship can be a bad relationship, but it doesn't mean it's abusive. And likewise, an abusive relationship is going to be a bad relationship. So there will be evidence of that abuse. Correct. And something to be mindful of is that it's not only um, the typical, Bible cases are not only for spouses, right? Yes, if you're married to a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident, and you've been abused either physically or you can show extreme hardship, you will qualify for VAWA. Um, however, if you are also the child of a US citizen, you will qualify for VAWA. And that encompasses not only a biological child, but also mm -hmm. if you are a stepchild of a US citizen, meaning if your parent married a US citizen before you turn 18, and that marriage was deemed to be bona fide, and you have evidence that you were abused by your step parent, then you will qualify for VAWA. Um, if you were adopted as well by a US citizen, you can also show that you qualify for VAWA. So one example that comes to mind, um, which is a case that I, I handled almost 10 years ago now, um, which is where we had two kids that came to that came to South Florida after the horrible earthquake that took place in Haiti in 2010. Um, the, cho the, the two minor kids at the time were living with their biological mother. The biological mother passed away during the earthquake. The aunt, so the mother's sister came to Haiti, brought them back to South Florida, adopted them, and then went on to abuse them physically uh, and so forth to the point where they ran away from home. Because of that adoption, 
we were able to show that these kids were being abused by their legal U.S. citizen parent. And through that application, both kids were eventually able to become U.S. citizens. Um, so sometimes you have to take a step back and really listen to what's going on to make sure that you see, okay, is there a link here, at least a legal link to show that it was either a parent, a child, or a spouse, either step. So you want to look into step parents, you want to look into adoption cases to make sure that you don't miss um, a potential opportunity to help someone. Thank you for that example, attorney. Um, let's move on to VAWA if I'm outside of the U.S. So there are some certain circumstances where if the immigrant is outside of the U.S., they may still qualify for VAWA. And that's going to be where you can show that your abuser is an employee of a U.S. government, of the U.S. of a U.S. government agency or a member of the U.S military and that you're being abused abroad. But if you are abroad and you can show that the abuse took place while both of you and your spouse were in the US, you are still able to qualify and apply for VAWA. Okay, so we saw the types of evidence um, already. So let's talk about the, the the very, um, I, I think this is more so the practical portion of the of seeing a VAWA application. So, what kind of forms would we need to fill out for VAWA, and what are they for? Sure. So, when you're applying under the VAWA program, you're going to be submitting the I three sixty, which is the application for the actual VAWA, and sometimes you're applying at the same time or after the I-45, which is for the green card. But what's important to note is when you're applying for VAWA, you are gonna be submitting ev the evidence that we spoke about, which is the evidence of the abuse, but you also need to submit evidence to show that th there is a qualifying relationship. So if it's your spouse that had abused you, then you wanna make sure that you provide not only the marriage certificate, right? Um, but you also wanna provide evidence that you guys resided together. So if it's a lease, if it's mail at the same address, um, you also want to provide any evidence that you have of their immigration status. So a copy of their green card, a copy of their U.S. citizenship certificate of naturalization, anything of that nature. Um, if you don't have evidence of their immigration status, that's something, as long as you give immigration enough details about the abuser, they should be able on their end to actually verify the abuser's status. Um, and obviously, you know, if you qualify from uh, the abuse um, taking place in the U.S., then you'll also provide that kind of evidence. But you want to make sure that you also provide evidence that you are someone of good moral character, which means that you have to give clearance letters of everywhere you live. Um, so if you've lived in both Florida and New York, for example, you want to provide police clearance letters showing that you've never been arrested. If you have been arrested, that that's a conversation you need to have with your attorney to make sure that you still qualify for VAWA. Because let's say you have been abused. Let's say you do qualify for everything else. But if you're not admissible because of the criminal issue, immigration can find that you lack the good moral character necessary to actually get the VAWA. Um, what's interesting about VAWA is, unfortunately, it does take quite some time, not as long as the U visas, but it can take up to 36 months. Sometimes we've seen it take a little longer. And from the reports that we receive from USCIS, it looks about it looks like about 25% of VAWA cases are being approved. So when you are filing for VAWA, it's really important that you take the time to build the case properly because you want to make sure that all of your documentations line up, that it, you're able to cross that line to show that it wasn't just a bad marriage, right? You know, obviously you have to um, submit evidence that you entered the marriage in good faith, but you have to show more that things went bad. You really have to show that you were a victim of battery with police records, medical records, school records, et cetera, or that you were a victim of extreme hardship, which is a documentation that we have talked about before um, to show the mental abuse, the, the emotional abuse that took place during the relationship. 
Thank you, attorney, for clarifying that. Now, what about the probability of approval? So like we said right now, from what we're seeing, it's about 25% of cases of VAWAs being approved, which is why it's really important that you submit a strong case and you submit enough documentation to show immigration that you qualify for what you're requesting. All right. Thank you, attorney. So moving on to the U visa. So U visas are um, similar to VAWAs in the sense that they are protecting victims. However, U visas, you don't really have to show a family relationship between yourself and the abuser. This is open to any victim, any immigrant that's a victim of a crime, as long as you can show that you were physically or emotionally impacted by the crime, and also that you were helpful in the investigation. Um, it's very common for victims of domestic abuse to file for, for example, an initial temporary injunction but they don't pursue the injunction. If you're not pursuing a case, if you're not um, helping the system, right, um, prosecute the crime, then you risk the chance of not being eligible for the U visa. The reason being to qualify for the U visa, one of the components is you have to submit an immigration form that is signed by the court, the detective, someone in the legal system in the state side that says that yes, she was a victim and also she or he was a victim and also that they helped in the prosecution. They were helpful in the investigation. Okay, great. So what are the requirements um, for the UVs? You could be inside or outside the U.S. and we'll talk about that a little bit in just a few seconds, that you were a victim of one of the qualifying crimes um, that you had that you can show physical or psychological injuries. So this, this is where you're gonna be submitting photos, or you're gonna be submitting psychological evaluations or letters from your therapist, that you have information about the criminal activity that you were actually helpful and that the crime um, took place here and that you are admissible into the US. So let's take a look at the qualifying crimes. This is a list of all of the crimes. If you're able to show you were a victim of or a similar crime that you'd be eligible for U visa. As you can see, right, domestic violence is one of the crimes that makes it so that you're eligible for a U visa. So let's say that um, you were a victim of domestic violence, so you're not a, you're not married to your abuser. In that case, since you don't qualify for the VAWA, you definitely are able to qualify for a U visa. Um, we're not going to be able to talk about all of the qualifying crimes here, but I did want to point out some crimes. For example, there's abusive sexual contact, um, which happens quite often within the immigrant community. If that is reported and if you do um, help, if you are helpful in the prosecution of the crime, then you would be able to qualify for the U visa. And also rape. The reason I have rape there is, um, because of one potential client that we spoke to in the last two months. So there are a lot of, there. what is okay abroad is not necessarily legal or okay in the United States. And what I mean by that in this particular situation, we were speaking to a family where they had, um, a few people come in through the humanitarian program, also known as the Biden program. And through that application, through that program, they were able to um, help different friends come in. One of the friends is in his 30s, and the another friend is a minor. She's 16. Apparently, they have a sexual relationship. In the US, that is called rape. Because, so if and the US citizen is not comfortable with what's going on and wanted to go ahead and report what was happening. In that specific situation, right, that is called statutory rape. If you're a victim of statutory rape, you will qualify for a U visa. So I really want to empower victims to be able to seek legal help seek legal guidance, but also to try to do it on their own without having other 
family members in the room with you, if possible. There's nothing wrong with asking for the support of friends and family. However, there are certain circumstances, if you're not comfortable explaining what's going on in your personal life, or if you're not comfortable explaining what you were a victim of, and there's situations where that family member may have a conflict between helping you and protecting the U.S. citizen that's hurting you. And I've seen that in a lot of circumstances. So this is just one example where, um, you know, you just have to be mindful that what is happening at home is not necessarily okay or illegal in the U.S. And you have to be comfortable to open up and to explain the circumstance that you're in and ask for help, ask for a call or a, vid or a Zoom call with an attorney, either a private attorney or nonprofits. There are many nonprofits that help victims that have been um, victims of crimes, especially domestic violence, where they can guide you and help you. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure to highlight that. Thank you so much for clarifying that attorney. Actually, one of the questions that I have here and, you know, it's in the U visa cases, um, is it necessary for the person who is the violator in this situation? Is it necessary that they have legal status in the U.S. like the VAWA? So no, not as, no. For the U visa, what's important is that you were a victim, you were listed as a victim. You're able to um show that the person's being um prosecuted, that you've been helpful, and that there's a case happening. So that so here in the U visa content, they're not really focused on the abuser. They're focused on, on the fact that you were a victim and that you're helping in the investigation and also pushing the case along. That is the purpose of the U visa. It's two different, two different programs, two different purposes. Thank you, attorney, for clarifying that. So unfortunately, so with the U visa, as you see, it can take up to 60 months to get the U visa approved. So that takes it's a very long process. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. But what's great about the U visa process is that there's a way higher approval um statistic here because uh, close to 80 percent of u visa cases filed or approved and you and that's understandable because in this case immigration is getting a signed affidavit a signed immigration form by someone in the local police in the courts etc really certifying this is what happened yes this person was a victim and yes they were helpful So what's interesting to note is for both the VAWA and the U visa process, the applications have to be approved so that you're able to actually get a work permit. Having a pending VAWA by itself will not get you that work permit. Having a pending U visa by itself will also not get you that work permit. So just be mindful of that. Thank you, attorney. Okay, great. So the last point here is to really seek help. Um, there are different, you know, there are different organizations, both local organizations, national organizations. Their purpose is to help victims of crimes, especially victims of domestic violence. Um, there is a hotline that's available that we have here on the screen, which is 1-800-799-SAFE if you do need help, if you're in a situation that you need to get out of. So please, please don't be scared. You are able to call, you're able to get guidance. Um, there are a lot of attorneys available to also guide victims that are immigrants that don't really know the system here. And many immigration attorneys, as you know, are also bilingual. So you can also seek an attorney that speaks your language. Um, like Catalina said, at our firm, we are fluent in French, Haitian, Creole, and Spanish, but we are more than happy and willing to help. Thank you so much for pointing that um, last portion out and for, for really emphasizing on the idea of getting help 
Um, because really any, any, whether it be a VAWA case, a U visa, or any other situation that you may be in, getting help is, is absolutely key to getting started, to getting out. Um, please, thank you so much, everyone, for joining our webinar for today. Our phone number is 305-371-8846, and our email address is intro at eliselawfirm.com. Do not hesitate to reach out. We are more than happy to help you with your VAWA case, your U visa case, or um, any other immigration case that you may have pending. Thank you so much for joining us today. And attorney, thank you so much for the very valuable information that you've shared with us. Bye, everyone. See you at your our next webinar. Bye, everyone.